and repeatedly so. Um, I also want to find out what or how does the, in, the e, EPD respond in relation to problems that you have with um, complaints from residents as it relates to dust and environmental hazards. That's two. And the management of the, I, this may be interministerial, but the management of the sargasm seaweed. We have the beach at River Bay again festered with seaweed and nothing has been done for the past, I would say, weeks or almost months. So I want to know what is happening in relation to these things. How will the ministry address those three questions? Thank you. Honorable Minister, I want to get him two other persons. So brevity. Yeah, yeah I will just pass on the, um, the questions. I will just pass on the question to, and they can, uh, they can answer in this order. Thank you. Um, Minister, the manager of sanitation, uh, Ryan Als, sorry, the NCC Ryan Als can answer the question as it relates to the maintenance plan of um, our parks. The, the EPD can act to an answer um, as it relates to the complaints, dust, dust uh, pollution, <coughs> and the sargassum CV. I don't think that that falls smack in our ministry, but if it, if, it, if, if it does have anything to do with our ministry, EPD can also answer that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Um, good afternoon, Honorable Member. Reference to the question on the maintenance of the, the parks, it is an issue of resource availability and the lack of equipment to do such. Within the estimates, um, the upcoming financial year, we do have um, some equipment there. And as soon as we have the funds available, that equipment will be purchased and we should be in a better position to manage those parks consistently. Um, note that the equipment will be allocated to the northern parishes for the northern zone and once that equipment is there, we should have no problem in maintaining those areas. Reference now to the question on the sargasm seaweed river bay. Um, Maritime Affairs has the responsibility for the seaweed, however at the river bay area, um, NCC maintains um, that responsibility and works with the Soil Conservation Unit within the Ministry of Agriculture. They have the requisite equipment that is required to clean the River Bay area, and we utilize our trucks and to transport the material out of there. The conversation has been had with um, the officer in charge of the Soil Conservation Unit, and he assures us that as soon as the equipment is available, we can tackle the problem. Uh, he anticipated that that would be within the next week or so. Thank you. Okay, the um, Health Services Nuisance Regulations um, is the legislation that's currently used to manage ambient air quality and any complaints we receive with respect to that, that area. Um, there are some challenges in effectively in bringing enforcement action against people, persons under that legislation. However, the department's first option is always to work with persons to help them improve their practices. Um, we are looking at an uh, ambient air quality policy. Um, hopefully to provide a, a legal a policy that will provide a legal framework for monitoring ambient air quality, bringing, eventually bringing legislation which would allow government to effectively regulate those type of activities. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Member President Thomas. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I want to also laud the efforts of the Honorable Minister, the current Minister, and indeed the Minister whom he succeeded during those, these last two and a half, almost three years, and to highly commend them for pursuing many of the manifesto pledges that this government has pursued. We know that COVID-19 has played a tremendous role in setback of a lot of what has taken place, 
but I want to indicate how happy I am about the plans for the botanical garden. And I pray that we will all have the opportunity as it starts to unfold and as it comes to a measure of conclusion that we will all be able to celebrate, to visit, to recreate, and to do all the other things that we know families can do because of the limited spaces across the islands for recreation. Of course, when they look at what's happening, especially in those areas where we have uh, the housing units and so on, space is still very limited. And I'm sure that the Botanical Garden will be able to give that kind of ambience and opportunity for them to celebrate and to do whatever else has to be done in that wonderful space. I have a particular interest, as you would know, ma'am, with the Heart of Barbados location. We have the Environmental Protection Zone in St. Thomas. And of course, it impacts on the lives of many of the citizens, particularly those in Allen View. Uh, I wanted to find out um, through the Honorable Minister and his staff um, what plans there are for our heritage site location in Sturges, at Sturges number one, that has been the bedrock of all the activities that take place and the culmination of such for the heart of Barbados for so many years in the past, and the kind of rekindling of community spirit where people donated their time, they volunteered their time for free. They worked with the Heart of Barbados project for those years, and it was a kind of explosion that I have not seen perhaps in almost 50 years in my life when it came to community participation and engagement through the, 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 um, the project that was there from UNESCO and the opportunity to expand people's knowledge and, and skills in working together as a community. And I want to know what plans there are at number one Sturges because I will hate to know that it will leave us or go for any other purpose acknowledging that over the years in the last administration, little or nothing was done. And of course the place started to fall apart. But now that we have had the regathering of 2020, I believe that that location needs to be well examined and upgraded because that is where we have held weddings and fairs, all kinds of activities to be able to celebrate and you know we are limited. The other, um, um, so I'd like to, the minister please to indicate to us through his team what the plan is and I'm going to just scrap the one with the fire um, aspect of things that they had and I also want to indicate to the minister that our plans for community cleanup was started in national cleanups. Many communities started out, but COVID impacted. And I want to know how are we going forward with it because we've seen an in a rekindling of spirits across the island, not only with the teams that are helping with MTW and NCC across the island, but of course we have um, housing, neighborhood watches and other community groups that are willing to assist once they can get the support from the various entities and the private sector for the bags and the trucks and so on to be able to dispose of the garbage and the other things um, that impact on us. And the only final one is to do with what is happening in St. Thomas. I heard the Honorable Member for St. Philip South speak of what's happening in St. Philip, but it is sad that many of the persons in Barbados who have vehicles, motor vehicles, seem to think that the center of Barbados is the dumping ground. And you know we have the mango of landfill, we have the beast bottle fiasco. I got here this morning because of another dumping ground near Lester Vaughan School, and, and it therefore frightens me because people put their garbage in the vehicles and drop it in the nearest gully. So the gully at Jack in the Box, that is similar to what is happening at um, the Welch Mahal Gully. If you tour there, ma'am, you will see the beauty of Barbados. People are dumping there every day. And therefore, I want to know if and when, I should say, cameras will be coming to St. Thomas to help us as well to be able to identify those culprits. Because I know that you can legislate so many things, but you can't legislate discipline or a culture. And some Barbadians have become extremely, extremely untidy and disrespectful to our environment that we have nothing else to bequeath to our children and our generations but our environment. So I want to know when next we will be able to get, um, when we will be able to get in the lineup for cameras, <laughs> cameras for Vaucluse and for uh, Hangman's Hill and the Honorable Minister for St. Philip South, uh, remember, spoke about not finding bodies in St. Philip yet. 
uh, in the areas where they're dumping, but we have had bodies across the length and breadth of St. Thomas. Hangman's Hill, Vaucluse, Duke Stenantry, strangers up until 2017 crop over another young man, and I think he was from St. Philip too. And so I, I just want to get some clarification on it because numerous questions are coming from the residents and others, and I would wish for us as a people to become even more conscious as to the role that our environment will play and that once we come together as a people, we can make the difference because the resources we have now and the entities that work with us in disposal of our garbage and helping to build and, and to educate about environment was not in existence when I was a child. But our people then were more disciplined, they conformed, they did what they have to do with dignity. And I would like for us in our educational programs and so or through the minister who will indicate what educational programs they are to help us to be able to achieve some of these objectives and these goals. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I just want to say the two last questions I would just answer quickly in respect of time. Uh, the Clean and Green Project, this will be uh, extended across the left and breadth of Barbados per constituency, including the good constituency of St. Michael West, of course. We have started to put cameras there as well. And I want to say for your camera program um, and, the, and the cameras that you asked about, I will, we will be certainly partnering with a private entity because corporate Barbados understand the pain and suffering that um, governments uh, past and present has, um, have had with, with uh, the issue of illegal dumping and uh, the whole issue of um, ecosystems management. And I am happy to say that um, there's a, there are a group of, of private entities and companies who decided that they want to partner with us in terms of providing cameras free of cost for government so that we can, they can be involved in the fight in an integral way of um, capturing those persons who run uh, a fold of um, normal, normal um, disposal practices. So um, I, I'm just, I'm just uh, making a, a promise to you today that um, your, your camera concern will be sorted out and to let you know that the Clean and Green project will, be, will go in every single constituency, every single community, and we will be rolling up out across the length and breadth of Barbados. The issue of the plans and development of Sturges, I will let uh, Mr. Devonish speak to those plans. Thank you, Minister. Good afternoon once again. Um, the programs which the Honourable Member for St. Thomas alluded to over the years had formed an integral part of the work of the Natural Heritage Department. And those programs also were an integral part of the concept of integrated planning and development of livelihoods. We, had, we were back on stream to revitalize such programs as part of the regathering um, process. But as you know, COVID put a stop to that. Basically, St. Thomas was the next parish which was due for celebrations. Since that time, we've had discussions with some private sector people. Um, we've had some discussions with the culture division. We've had discussions with um, other interesting people who organize events. And what we're looking to do is to re revitalize some of the programs on an individual basis. Within recent times, um, we also had a discussion with the Kales of Barbados Limited Board when they were meeting with the Chaka company from Jamaica, which is scheduled to take over the management of Harrison Scave, and their program had outlined a series of um, community programs which would build on those things that we would have done before. They have indicated a willingness to work with the community. They have indicated a willingness to develop with the youth in the heart of Barbados, and to also provide some level of support for our annual 10K or 5K race. The idea of the respective programs, we've been looking for partners and where possible, the department will provide some limited support. So I would say that those programs are very much in our thoughts, and every program we submit to parent ministry for um, approval, we always look at that as one of the passing points. Within the community itself, we continue to work with Holy Innocent School, and we continue to work with the Holy Innocent Church, because we find within those communities, there are many people who are willing to volunteer their time and their efforts. The means of the grounds have been rekindle and I know the National Conservation Commission is doing a good job in trying to get us back to that point. It will take us a couple months before we get it back to the state where we can have the weddings and functions that you alluded to. But in speaking to Mr. Dallas, I know he has a plan for the area 
and also in speaking with the minister, he visited the offices a few months ago, and he is also very enthusiastic and uh, pointed out the use of clean and green to bring back some of the furniture to the grounds and to reintegrate the property into the community. So those plans are very much in, our pro in, in what we are doing. And even the soil care program, which we alluded to earlier, which includes um, seven Caribbean countries, there's a component that deals with livelihoods and climate change, which we intend to bring to the heart of Barbados. So the concept and the establishment of the heart of Barbados as a going concern for community first, tourism second, is one that the ministry is working slowly to get back on track. But the main approach this time is that we are seeking private sector partners to carry as much of the load with us as possible. Not, because, not only because it will help with the financing, but to reinstate and reinstall the ownership. Because once people own these programs, as the minister alluded to, then it will make the management of these programs a bit more uh, sustainable and it will make it more effective. What we want to do at Number One Sturge is to provide a space where people can continue to meet and that, that still continues from time to time. The community requests the use of the grounds. They request the use of the offices, and we provide that over weekends or weekdays, whenever we can accommodate the community for their community meetings and community discussions. And we are very happy to continue to do so in our plans going ahead. Thank you. And lastly, Honorable Member for Christchurch South. Thank you, Madam Chair of the Committee. Good afternoon. Uh, please be assured that I'm going to be extremely brief, ma'am. Uh, Minister, I, I sat with some, I marveled really at the several comments from your several colleagues expressing admiration for the work that you have done. And uh, while I don't want to gild a lily, uh, let me myself say that I know of no official cause to spurn at you. Uh, since I have myself observed that for the industry and integrity of your labors, uh, you certainly uh, are giving politics a very, very good name, and I, I, I do wish you well now and in the future. I just wanted to, now I wanted to speak on other topics, but they've been dealt with already. There's just one which is maybe perhaps a little novel. Uh, since I don't wish to rehash what I've heard before. Your mandate, you've described it as cleaning and greening. And that deals with uh, nature, that deals with the natural environment. Now, it is fine to traverse Barbados and to uh, manicure the vegetation, and, and that is admirable. And it, and it really is yielding results that uh, make this country a lot more uh, pleasant place to live. Uh, except that when that work is done, there are still some spaces that are unsightly. I'm talking about walls and uh, the, the galvanized fences. They really do make Barbados look very unsightly. Now, to use the term of the Honorable Member for St. Lucie, uh, it may require some uh, interministerial intervention. Is that the term, Honorable Member? Yes. And uh, I'm wondering if I may engage your thoughts in, in, in liaison with, I don't know if it would be the Ministry of Culture, but to engage the services of our artists to redo a lot of these uh, spaces, the walls which otherwise take graffiti and, and, and in some cases uh, feces from vagrants, uh, if, if, we can, if we can engage the National Cultural Foundation through the Ministry of Culture to have these spaces painted and redone in, in, in an artistic way. Uh, because we have a lot of artists in this country who are unemployed and underemployed. And while you're doing, dealing with cleaning and greening, I wonder if I may engage your thought on the aspect of beautification. I think that is a part of your mandate as well. Uh, I, I'd like to hear you on that if you don't mind. I thank you very much. Thank you for your comments and certainly um, I would do everything with every connective tissue to ensure that I don't let you down, let you down as it relates to the, um, the trust that you have put in me in terms of my mandate. Um, so it's to say to you that we have already started that conversation with the Ministry of Culture because only recently 
um, we had a project started in Church Village, and that is the Clean and Green project, right in, at the site of the, the part that we have built out. Uh, two structures representing, two walls representing the buildings, the end of the buildings for the National Housing Corporation. And I would have spoken to Minister Dugid already about it, because to your point, we are now seeking to uh, refurbish those areas and have painting and beautification of those walls in the areas once the once the cleaning green project goes uh, to the particular area then we have um, as part of our mandate to bring aesthetics not only to the, um, the, the 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 ground as we know it but also the surrounding areas as well so um, that type of partnership is something that we are seriously looking at and we have already engaged both the national housing corporation and the um, the the ministry responsible for, for culture. Thank you very much. I remember you're now invited to give your summation. <clears throat> I just want to thank um, this August Chamber for allowing my ministry to really articulate our plans and to elucidate on um, issues that's raised by the honorable members. I want to say that the, the Ministry of Environment is now in a position to allow Barbados to have a voice and an and international stake as it relates to what we do in Barbados. Barbados now must be able to perch above its international weight when we are talking about the environment. As president of um, uh, Latin American Caribbean, I had discussions as it relates to how we can have a green economic post-COVID recovery. And every single minister of Latin America and the Caribbean, our environmental minister, exposed the fact, the, the fact that we need to ensure that our biodiversity is preserved, that our um, dump, dump sites must become a thing of the past, that there must be ecosystem management, that desertification, land degradation, all of these things I spoke about the, the, the fact that the ozone depleting substances, that there must be control, all, and, and that we must find nature-based solutions to help protect our environment and our citizens. And in the Bridgetown Declaration, we say to the entire world, in, in our UNIA 5 uh, meeting, that this declaration will pretty much determine the way of life in our international sphere, the way how we treat the sustainable development. And sustainable development could never be realized unless you recognize the tenets of the five Ps, the planet, people, prosperity, partnership, and peace, and how all, the, all these tenets are interfused to augment the cause of ordinary Barbadians. We have the Clean and Green Project that will basically reform and reshape the, uh, the geographical space as we know it, Barbados. A little country, but the leader in terms of the small area developing state. I said in my opening remarks that Barbados must be the most beautiful place in the Western Hemisphere. The there is the botanical, someone said the world, in the world. My apologies. <laughs> but we have the botanical garden, a botanical space like never before seen in Barbados. And we are going to ensure that everything is conserved in that space that speaks to all the issues that we are faced with. And to allow it to have that international appeal that this country so urgently desire. We are going to inform what we do with the sciences. And in terms of the sanitation, we have started to look at ensuring that the operationalization of this sanitation is on par with any um, collection agency in the world. With now the um, the new trust to have the the carrots the carrots and the list associated, and then to have the GPS on cans across Barbados, we are going to bring the technology and the sense to bear. But how it affects ordinary Barbadians is the most important conversation. When your environment is clean, what sense? What what is the cycle of social benefits to it? When you have those spaces that you can recreate in, these types of conversations we need to have in Barbados. And I'm saying that I am going to work with every single sinew to ensure that the environment has a voice, it has a space, and that the programs and projects in this ministry redound to the benefit of 
every single Barbadian. I am saying to you that the little nugget that says cleanliness is next to godliness is not a nugget that you can put, buy it in the supermarket and put in a frying pan. It is a philosophical nugget for me. And it speaks to the fact that there is a map saying that we expose at Latin America and the Caribbean around me thing. And it says that we must build forward better. It is one that I want Barbians to hold close to their hearts. We must build forward better, but the only way we can build forward better is if the environment is at the center. It must be the fulcrum for any type of development and sustainable recovery post COVID. So with those few words, I want to say that I am here ready, willing, and able, along with my good officers, who I want to thank unreservedly for spending three hours of their time here to tell the rest of Barbados that the environment is ready, is willing, and is able to partner with ordinary Barbadians to augment their cause. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I pose the question to the House that had 32 in the amount of $39,690,227 stand part. All honourable members in favour, please say aye. Aye. All those against, please say nay. Me thinks the ayes have it. Madam Chair, I beg to move that you do no report. Is under the Speaker. Progress. Right. And seek leave to sit again. The question is that I no, do not report to his honor the speaker progress and ask for leave to sit again. All honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. All honorable members against, please say nay. Me thinks the ayes have it. Chairman has reported progress and requested leave to sit again. Honorable Leader, Government Business. Mike. Mike, please. I think I like the Senate, you know, though they were automated. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I um, would like to s propose that we adjourn, sorry, suspend now for lunch and return at quarter after three. The question is that this armor chair will be suspended until 3.15 p.m. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say no. Me take the eyes out. This armor chair will stand suspended until 3.15 p.m.